There are those pieces or movements in music which prove to be so far advanced of the pieces extant in the genre which they might be grouped, or being such a complete dissolution of the form as to serve as a new sounding board. Then there are those which exist wholly in a realm of their own, in which the style has been heretofore previously unknown. These pieces of music serve as a cleave which completely herald in a new mode of expression, a resolute break in the gradation of musicology. So completely unprecedented are these examples that new perspectives and definitions must be formed in order to codify the work. The previous musical codes of critical analysis are overturned and rendered nearly unusable and it is so with such a seminal work as that of Rogat. There is little known to tell of this artist. Only one recording from Rogat is known to exist, it being a rough, scratchy, and blisteringly inchoate lyrical diatribe. The recording was gleaned from a pirate radio station transmission in the year 2000 or 2003. The station's signal origination was untraceable, and any subsequent attempts to recover the signal have been unsuccessful. The piece was introduced over the air simply as being from Robert, and as no indication to the name of the song was given, it has thus been labeled untitled, though with the simplistic frankness of the lyrics, one could suggest a title along the lines of I've not cared like never before. The checking of historical musical records have failed to turn up evidence of any artist known to have recorded under the name of Rogat. As well, many musicians and ethnomusicologists were also consulted. Historian Alan Lomax, along with his father John Lomax, are considered preeminent scholars of American music. The Lomaxes spent many decades of the 20th century cataloging field recordings of folk songs and conducting interviews of rural and mountain folk for the Library of Congress. They have cataloged every sort of folk song imaginable, from work chants of prison chain gangs, Appalachian tunes carried over from the immigrants of Scotland and Ireland, songs of rail workers, and even children's playground melodies. Having written many compendiums on the subject, they have introduced the world to such musical luminaries as bluesman Hoodie Leadbelly Leadbetter and folklore storyteller Ray Hicks. I presented Alan who was himself known to perform musically, with a copy of the work by Rogat and inquired as to whether he had ever heard of this artist. He was quite taken aback upon listening to the work and assured me that in all of his past research he had never come across anyone by this name. It was a verse that was suited to the life of wandering people. It spoke of partings, of oppression, of heartbreak, and most of all, of homelessness. And he said, I'm a poor boy, and a long way from home. As of yet, nothing further has been gathered as to the artist's origins, or the era in which the recording was actually made. The piece is a work of equilibrium and symbiosis in brilliance of form. A listen to the piece yields a sense of a recording with seemingly many styles in each. The opinions of musicologists as to the genre of the piece have run the gamut of much of recorded music. 
being due to the eclecticism of the piece, attempts to place the recording as being from a certain era, i.e. time and place, have proved most difficult. And it wasn't necessary for, for him to be a definitive person. He was, he was a receiver. He was, he was possessed. And he articulated what the rest of us wanted to say, but couldn't say. It has been pegged as ranging anywhere from Appalachian Mountain Music to Garage Proto-Punk to No Wave Avant Lo-Fi. Therefore, due to these seemingly melded idioms, one finds it difficult to ascertain whether this innateness of forms is a knowing distillation of other styles, which would thereby give us the notion that it would have come after said styles. Yet one also gets a sense in the recording of something that at the same time presages, yet somehow still manages to seem advanced of those styles, thus further confusing the issue of placement. At one time, the piece manages to chart historically as pre-industrial and post-apocalyptic in a truly cauterizing synergy. Yeah. <laughs>